Let me introduce the first presenter, Liz Tullis. 16 years. If you have a posse, if you have personal favorites, please, you are encouraged to do this. She has 16 years of consulting and industry experience supporting implementation of strategic plans. Liz's main clients are her sons, Conrad and Garrett. She currently works for Bank of America, managing a lot of money in technology investment. However, her expertise could support a farmer evaluating chickens and cows, or in this case, managing the recovery of her son. That may or may not be explained tonight, but she serves on the boards of Green Spaces Alliance and Luminaria. Liz Tullis, please give it up. Okay, hello. hello. Well, tonight I'm going to be known as Conrad and Garrett's mom. And so the button I push is space. All right, let's go. Okay, so Conrad was born on July 24, 2002 with a normal delivery. Now, there's nothing really normal about childbirth, but I use the term to convey that there were no complications at birth, no genetic issues, you know, and for 17 months, Conrad lived as a neurotip, the term used to describe a typically developing child. Now, for those of you who need a reminder of typical development, Conrad was active. He liked to go. He liked to run, play, dance. We attended so many in-store performances at Waterloo Records. He was named an honorary um, employee by the local icon spot. And um, he was learning English and Spanish, and he was a healthy, happy boy. Now, on January 3rd, 2004, he fell into a swimming pool and nearly drowned. Now, Matt and I were in Costa Rica, but the child we came home to was in critical condition, but he was alive. Now, I used to think at that time that you either drowned or you didn't drown, you lived or you died, and I didn't get to stay ignorant for long. Um, Conrad's brain injury was severe, and as soon as his basic condition stabilized, we were told to prepare for him never to get better. The best they could muster was to hope for the best, prepare for the worst. But this is not the story of his accident. The Express News actually did a very compassionate recount of the story in an article uh, to which I can refer you. This is a story of his recovery, how he continues to defy the nevers imposed on him, you know, those artificial boundaries, because we and Justin Bieber have a problem with never, um, and we're not alone. If you've ever studied for a board exam, like when I was studying for the CPA, um, the hint they gave us was if a multiple question included the word never, it was never the right answer. You could eliminate it and guess at the rest. And so even accounting doesn't believe in such absolutes. And so, because it can be self-fulfilling. You know, the first two years, Conrad distorted his body and was tight. And if you hold your hand like this for six months and a year, you may never be able to open it. So we were pretty sure what would happen if we do nothing. So we just got intensive training on how to care for him, how to stretch him, how to feed him, how to cure his congestion. And we assembled this team of professionals, you know, days of physical therapy, acupuncture, sensory integration. We were open to all possibilities with the mantra, potential to help without hurting. And a shout out to San Antonio, we have never had to leave the city limits for his care. Now you might ask, how do we find these therapists? Well, really we found each other. It's the principles of networking. You know, we told his story, someone told us about someone and so on. And I highlight the people at the top because three of his caregivers came to us with different channels and they now practice together in one place and they didn't know each other before Conrad. And now him and other kids get to benefit from the one-stop shop. So you, in October of 2005, a new therapist was born. Garrett provides stimulation without a doubt. But he's Conrad's brother, and they share the essence of that relationship fully. Sometimes Garrett's pushing the wheelchair, sometimes he's copping a ride. They share the same room, and they even share a special language like siblings often do. And family therapy is so essential. You know, they teach us how to feed him and stretch his mouth, but we feed him three days a week. The therapists stretch him and move him, but we do it the rest of the time. And the we I'm talking about is all his friends and family that continue to be available for his care, including that downtime, which I call grandpa nap therapy. And so, you know, this hand, this high five, is brought to you by hours and hours of therapy and love. So let's talk about this hand. You with school aged children are used to art being brought home. And Conrad is in fourth grade, Cambridge Elementary, attends school daily. And honestly, at the beginning, I didn't expect much from school. I really didn't think we were gonna get a value from going. And I could not have been more wrong. 
his special needs team continue to challenge him and find ways for him to communicate. And his typically developing his inclusion class, they already see well beyond his current limitations. You see, kids can't fake it. And in here I'm talking about enthusiasm. I was going to meet the teacher and this girl whispered to her mom, Conrad's in my class. Yes! You can't fake that. And let me read to you from a note from Emma who's been with him from first grade. You may not be able to do all the things that we do, but we know that you are a kid like us and we cannot wait until you can share all the things in your brain. See, so school provides something that no other therapy can, peer appropriate interaction. And I believe his peers are building critical thinking skills as they work with him. Um, let me read from you on a quote from the inclusion program. Every child is special with different needs and gifts. Their, children, their needs are important, but secondary to the fact that they are all children first. So you fast forward eight years, and Conrad has improved well beyond doctor's expectations. But when we ask what else can we do, we've got mostly like keep up the good work. Um, and to their defense, doctors are practicing known medicine. They're practitioners. And we had really surpassed medical knowledge of anoxic brain injury. We needed a researcher, scientists that are forging new paths in medical knowledge. And science is on our side. It used to believe that um, the brain was hardwired. You know, so if you lost function because of injury, you would never regain it. But it turns out the brain is plastic. It can change. It can build new pathways to compensate for injury. And Conrad is living proof that the brain can heal. So where do you find a scientist to take on his case? Well, you go back to the network. Now, what does a former mother superior at the University of Incarnate Word have um, in connection with a bow tie sport in neuro research at the UTL Science Center? Six degrees, and all in San Antonio again. And we spent a lot of that time at the mind science lectures across the way at Pearl Stiebels, where they bring in leading researchers from around the world. And it was here that we learned about the concept of functional imaging, the idea of looking at the brain's connections using functional MRI. And that led us to Dr. Fox. And they're using a special type of, of imaging called resting state imaging. And you can actually see functions there even when you're not doing anything, just resting. So the plan is to put children like Conrad into a scanner and look at the activity compared to typically developing children. And so the, um, they're still working on funding for the study, but once it's done, we're going to have better knowledge of what's happening in Conrad's brain from a functional standpoint. But moreover, we're going to advance medical science to help all the near drownings that are out there. I mean, this is really cool stuff. So eight years is just a drop in the bucket of potential. Conrad's um, website is named after um, the fact that his determination and his progress. I mean, for the first two years, we hardly got any response. But the fact that Conrad smiles is testament to his potential and a reason to continue to invest in hope.